to truly believe in the magic. Hey, Magic fans, and welcome to episode 103 of Penny for Your Thoughts, the podcast of the Orlando Magic UK. Uh, we're going to get into all things magic related today. Um, I'm joined by Gary and Mikey. How are you both doing, guys? Wish it was in Orlando, Paul. How about you? <laughs> Mate, I, I very nearly called this episode Three Guys Pining for Orlando. <laughs> uh, you know, I think we're going to end up going with something like hot, the homestand hot takes or something like that. It probably end up being called, but you know, mate, it could genuinely be called part three guys pining for Orlando because, gee, am I missing it? Incredible oh. trip, absolutely incredible. Mikey, yourself, yeah, same as you guys. Wish we were still there. Uh, it feels weird doing the pod because we haven't done one for feels like what was it close to four weeks now since uh since I did my you solo were, one before, say you before flew we solo, out. didn't you? Yeah. But, so, uh, uh, and we still haven't got Garrett on the podcast. He's uh, had to go off, go off on work duty tonight, so he can yeah. join us. But let's just say at this point, anybody listening, yeah, Garrett's got to work on a Friday night. Yeah. Please don't feel too bad for him. No. Because the work he's doing is hosting a corporate box at the Cardiff Devils ice hockey game with unlimited bar and food. Trust me, he, he's all right. He's all right. <laughs> <laughs> the only issue he may have is getting sacked on Monday morning for shouting at the officials, because we know how Grant loves a good ref run. <laughs> I think he might be sat on his hands a little bit more tonight if he's got to behave himself. <laughs> G, G in a suit behaving. It's quite a, it's quite a sad pay to see. Corporate <laughs> Jones. Corporate Jones there. Corporate yeah, Jones. Yeah, Corporate Jones. <laughs> but speaking of names... Uh, I'm surprised that neither of you introduced me as Ra- Raul Bacor yet. <laughs> no, you had to introduce yourself as that, boy. You need... <laughs> oh, mate. Come on, um, tell the story. Just, just for the benefit of everybody, um, on the trip to Orlando, I became known by everybody as Raul Bacor. Because we're in, I'm in SeaWorld filling in um, a form that I needed to do. And the uh, attendant looked down and said, uh, okay. Raul, um, am I okay to call you by your first name? Right. Yeah, you're fine to call me by my first name. My first name is Paul. She misread <laughs> my writing. So she oh, okay, I'm ever so sorry, Mr. Bacor. All right. It's bacon. <laughs> so she had had a complete nightmare. And as a result, the rest of the holiday, I was known as Raul Bacor. So welcome to Penny for Your Thoughts with Raul Bacor. <laughs> there we go. And to be fair, uh, that's... Uh, Three quarters of your party are all got re- new names as well. Rob's now oh. Roger. Yeah, he got known as Roger. <laughs> Thanks to Starbucks not reading it, reading their writing on the cup properly. <laughs> and, what, and what was Mrs. B's? Joan. Joan, that's it. <laughs> Joan, Joan left. Joe. Joan left. <laughs> I mean, Again, left ain't Starbucks. even close to bacon, is it? <laughs> no, Crazy. All that was, but, uh, yeah, we had good fun. We had good fun. So before we go I'm, any further. Go on, Mikey, go on. I was just going to say, what's funnier is it's not the fact that they can understand your accent. <laughs> they couldn't read your accent. They can't writing. read me right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Good back on. So anyway, but before we go any further, we do. We all three wanted to do something. Uh, we wanted to give a shout out to the Orlando Magic Organisation, to Dante Marcatelli, to David Steele, Jeff Turner, P. Manitas, TJ Hensley, Hayley Meyer, and, of course, our ever-amazing friend, Sabrina Riggs. You've all given us so many incredible moments on that trip. Um, also, we have to say that it was brilliant to meet up with so many people on this trip that we met for the first time, that we, you know, people who are friends, who we talk to regularly, who are followers, uh, who, you know, it was the first time we've actually met up with the guys from The Sixth Man. And there were so many people that we got to meet it was incredible and thank you so much even to the guy who when i was in the ultimate lounge going to the loo walks up as i'm stood at the side as i'm stood at the urinal <laughs> doing what men do at the urinals this guy walks up and goes yo magic uk high five i don't care who you are and i don't care about british reserve <laughs> there is no point in time where a high five at a urinal is a good thing but it's hey not, apparently this... 
It's not necessary. <laughs> well, that's, that's, what, that's what Paul Bacon thinks of that, but Raul back home might disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yo, yeah. UK, no. high five. No, it, we no. had we had a great trip though, didn't we? Um, it all it all started with the with the Hornets game, and Gary said it before we jumped on air. It, it's weird doing a podcast now that the fact that we've all met each other in person over there. Um, but yeah, we had we had the the tourism interviews that Dante set up with us before the game. We had the on court introductions with the whole group of us. There was. JC, Sean, Fraser, his wife and kids. There was Jamie and obviously yeah. us guys there as well. I'm not forgetting anyone, am I? Gary was there. Gary Clark. Oh, Gary, yeah. of course, Gary. Yeah. yeah. And don't forget Gary with an eye. The, the two yeah, Garys. Gary. Yeah, team, the G unit. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we had that nice introduction before the game. Paul was honorary captain for the game. One, one time one captain, and oh. one win. 100% record, just saying. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it happened for there. Then we had the uh, moments with Dante during the, the Golden State game, where I fluffed my lines, famously. <laughs> Paul, Paul set the tone, and then I had to lower the level, didn't I? I let's be fair, it's unusual that I'm actually not the one tripping over my words. Uh, however... You did it on national telly, mate. No, no, no. There's a difference. You can't <laughs> pronounce words, but I can't get my words out fast enough. That's the difference. <laughs> That's the only difference between us. But no, we had, we, on, had an awesome, we had an awesome time. We had an awesome time. And uh, obviously, we were disappointed G couldn't meet us out there and, and join in and everything. But he, hopefully, he's going to be out there later in the season. Uh, yeah, now we're all just feeling depressed now. We're hoping it's bloody cold outside and we're having to go back to work. Con constant rain. Yeah. So you say it started at the Charlotte game. For Gary and I, it started with the Boston game, meeting Angus yes. as well, which yeah. was just yeah. awesome. Uh, again, meeting Ian as well. Uh, it was yeah. so, so good. Um, and that's where, that was one of the times where Dante, David and Jeff had put themselves out to meet everybody. It was, it was just... It was just so good. The whole thing. Can't say enough about it. It's roll on the next time because we've yeah. got to do that again. And, and, and Angus even come out of his way to meet us at Magic Kingdom the first day I yeah. got there, just so we could go and go and meet him for for ten minutes and say hello to him. So that was really cool. Um, Cortez was another yeah. one. Yeah, I finally got to meet Gary. We finally got to meet Gary's mate Cortez. He was really cool. Um, there was, I'm trying to think, there was the, the Sacramento We are going to miss game. so many we're, people out. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll get into that in a but, but the amount of people, Paul will say this, it's weird how many people were coming up to us going, Mikey or Orlando Magic UK, and then it, it was weird getting recognised, I have to say that. <laughs> what about when we were at your first day? good reason. We were in, Ma <laughs> we're in Magic Kingdom on, our, on Mikey's first day. <laughs> We've all met I know up. What say. And we And we decide that, you know what, we'll... Once we'd finished uh, eating cinnamon rolls at Gaston's Tavern, we'll uh, head to Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. So, short line, we get on, off we go. And as we're in this line, just waiting to be boarded, this young lady starts talking to us. And she's like, you, you've got, you, looking at me, are you an, your annual pass holder? No, 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 not been here since 2018. Why do I know your face? Have you been here all, already? Have you been through the ride today? No, no, it's uh, first time. I really know your face. I really know your face. Do you, do you do Orlando Magic games? She says, and she just looked at you and she yeah, smiled. Yeah. And then she Orlando said, Magic UK podcast. Yes. <laughs> you do yeah. the podcast. So we go on to the Seven Dwarves ride. We do the Seven Dwarves ride, comes back into the station. We get out of the, uh, out of the car and we're just about to walk through the exit gates as we get waved down and that's, come on back on again straight yeah. so we got straight back on and we turned around again just because somebody watches the podcast it's, and so didn't get your that's name it. I know I dropped you thank you I know I dropped you thank you on yeah. the app but again thank you we appreciate it yeah it was it was superb and I, I found um, Pete's organisation of it yeah. was absolutely unreal and He's just a really nice guy, and he's 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 just what we'd say in the UK. He's got very good banter or very good patter, whichever. You, so yeah. Pete, that's what Pete would say in the UK. Um, and it, 
you know, like for me, I was in the same hotel as Gary Clark, really nice guy. Um, Angus likes likes a beer. <laughs> 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 which is good I've got no problem with that and then um, also like obviously seeing Cortez just a hilarious really good grounded guy and then even like in Schillisser as well um, just you know I was just strolling along minding my own business not even knowing she's working and then she comes out trotting out the store like, and, you know, like what are you doing here and everything and it was just just mad it was just a real surreal I think when we were on the court Mikey I think I think I said it was to you it was to you or Gary I went this is really really surreal yeah you did I, yeah so yeah. yeah, it was it was it was a good experience. I think standing in the tunnel waiting to go on was the, was one of the more surreal bits because you just kind of got Lamelo yeah. Ball walking by. I know he didn't play yeah. in the game, but he's just walking by, having been out warming up and practicing. And uh, you know, there you've got because that's where we were stood in the Charlotte Tunnel. Um, and I think these guys are just walking by. It it was it was odd. It was a bizarre experience. We, for, we had it. So we good. had it more when we were stood behind the basket, weren't we? We were doing our interviews, yeah. and then you just get like I didn't. Re- I said this to you guys. I didn't realize how big Lamelo Ball was until he was stood next to us. Yeah. yeah, and then he obviously had that great game the other night against us where they killed us. But um, yeah, should, should have kicked him. <laughs> should have, should, have, should, have, should have added an extra couple of weeks what? to his injury report. Yeah. <laughs> Well, one of us sacrificed the, sacrificed the experience for uh, the benefit of the team. Yeah, just yeah. Put, a re- put, put a reducer in on him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So, boys, we've uh, since we've got back, we've had the uh, City Edition Kingdom on the Rise jersey released. Um, features, um, what is it the old black uniform featuring a subtle metallic grey accent, evoking a suit of armour to display strength and fortitude. The armour is representative of the magic players battling on the court, fighting to protect its kingdom, along with the pride and resilience of the city of Orlando and its fans. That's what the press release says anyway. What do we reckon, lads? Like it? Um, I'm still not totally sold. If I'm being, I, I love the court. I think the court yeah, yeah. is absolutely oh, brilliant. I think it's the yeah. best edition court we've had. The jersey, it's it's okay. It's, it's, I'm still the same opinion. I, I know when we were over there, we got a little nod when we were down at the Amway, Mikey, didn't we? That it was kind of better in person. Yeah, it might be, but I don't know. It, it, it's okay. I'm not offended by it. I've ordered one, I'll, I'll get one. <laughs> I just, I don't know. It's, it's like a lot of Nike's releases at the minute. I just can't get on board with saying, Oh, that's brilliant, but it's okay. I quite like this jersey, I've got to say, Mikey. Yeah, I do. I, I like the whole kingdom on the rise with Paolo and Franz and Wendell yeah. and that being like part of the the backstory behind the jersey. Again, I love the court. The court's really good. I do like the design of the jersey. I just, I wish, we talked about this before we went on holiday and we, when we got the first like, little release or the the first leaks of the jersey and I was doing my little dive on maybe where the font come from I, I would have actually liked it if they had gone down that route of why they picked the font not just because it was I don't know a suit of armor or displaying strength and all that sort of stuff um but it is what it is it's it's just Nike churning through the jerseys year after year at the end of the at the end yep. of the day um but yeah, I, I like it. I'm, I've got my Paolo Banquero one on order anyway. That'll be coming hopefully before Christmas, if not just after. Um, I, I also, while we're on the jersey subject, I know you guys know this anyway, but the the last day we were in Orlando, or I was in Orlando, Paul, you were on the plane going home. Yeah, I was, in, uh, I was jet lagged by that point. And I'll tell the story about the, the possible hurricane later on, but... Um, me and Becky decided to go to the team store on the Tuesday, the day before we were flying home, just to have a last mooch around. There was nobody else there. We could have a good look and everything else. And my heart stopped to beat for a second. As I walked in the team store, there was nobody else in there except one person working in the team store who was in the corner doing all the printing of the jerseys. And I was like, that's the new statement jerseys. Because we all want to get our hands on the new ones. Yeah, that's not, That's a nice looking jersey in person. And he really had about he had about twenty boxes of the new statement jerseys. I was like, 
are those available to buy? I was thinking I'm going to get one before I come home and they are all youth sizes. I was, oh. So I then got to the point, I even got Becky out of the car whilst Lily was sleeping to wake Lily up to bring her <laughs> into the team store just to try and persuade Becky to buy one because she had been the first one in the UK to have had the new statement dress and she didn't want one. So I was good. Tell you, divorce, mate. That's That's just not good. That's dissing the team. You can't have that. Can't, oh, that. Mate. Can't, get, can't get it all right. I trained yeah. Lily. I trained Lily before we went out there. She did all her shouting and cheering and going. Becky, you've got to, mate. You've got to tell the story of uh, school yesterday. Oh, this, <laughs> so so she went. She went back to preschool this week, and uh, there was a story from one of her teachers. So she come home yesterday, and the uh, the whole class was apparently. She's only three, just to give you a picture and uh she, she goes to preschool all the kids are making so much noise the teacher decides to blow a whistle to tell all the kids to lower the volume because they're being too loud and lily turned around proper cheeky and turned around to the teacher goes well i i left my loud voice at the basketball because <laughs> <laughs> that lily was chanting loudly if any of you she saw was. the the uh, moment with Dante that she did it at the end, she was chanting loudly, let's go magic. There's been some yeah. good parenting. There's been some good parenting. So whilst we're on the subject of the new uniform, we'll get the plugs in. So you can shop for official Orlando Magic gear, including pre-ordering the new City Edition at both the NBA Store EU and Fanatics UK. Links are in the description. Add the code MAGICUK10 at the checkout for 10% off. There may be other offers available that give you a better discount use them by all means uh but please shop off of um our links on the website or off of the uh facebook and the like because it helps us also you can head over to the online store our own online store magic fans apparel t at i'll start again it's magic fans apparel dot tmail dot com uh for some of our own merchandise again links will be in the description and finally, help support the podcast simply by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Orlando Magic UK. Look at you <laughs> collapsing, laughing just because I'm 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 in full Mikey on a moment with Dante. No, mode, no, 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 yeah, 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 no. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I said you can't pronounce things. I can't say things <laughs> fast enough. That sort of. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pronouncing them correctly tonight. I'm, I'm just, just like, stumbling. <laughs> I'm just watching Mikey's reaction there and then just laughing with him. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, ignore these two and listen to me for a minute. <laughs> Finally, help support the podcast, if you don't mind, by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Orlando Magic UK. If you've subscribed through, any other, through another platform, it would really help us if you would also hit the subscribe button on YouTube. Right, let's get into it. The home stand. So, boys... Orlando have been in the Amway for the past seven games. Those games have seen the Magic win three and lose four. The win saw us beat three top teams, really, in Golden State, Dallas and Phoenix. The losses arguably came at the hands of some of the teams that we should be beating. We lost. We had losses to Sacramento, Houston, Charlotte and Minnesota. We're not going to talk about the games in great detail, but we're going to talk about one or two subjects that will bring into those games. So, Gary, I'm going to start with yourself, mate. Franz Wagner, should he be getting uh, more love and recognition? Yeah. Um, I think. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. <we> move on. <laughs> <laughs> I think with Wagner, it's just, he just somehow, I don't know how, but he seems to fly under the radar of media outside of Orlando. And when you look, I would, from what I've seen, and you, you can't watch every single game of every single team. But I'm looking at it right now, and I'm like, well, based on the rookies from last season, I know he's been injured, but Scotty Barnes has not had a good start to this season. I know he's playing with an injury. I think Evan Mobley is doing similar things to what he did last season, but doesn't hasn't taken a noticeable leap. So you're looking at it, and you're going, well, that puts Franz right now for me up there in the conversation with Jill and Green and Cade Cunningham as the best three players mm -hmm. at the start of this season from last year's draft. And he's doing that. Playing, yeah, I, I think I think Mobley's there, but I don't think he's in that top three. 
based on okay. against this. I would, I would put him still as a very good player, but I just would say that the standouts have been Cunningham, Green, and Franz. Then I would put Mobley just slightly below right now. I could maybe that's with Donovan Mitchell coming in and you know Garland and what's in Utah around them. But I would say flipping that, look at what Franz has really had. We still haven't had a fully fit team on the floor, and he's been played out of position. He's been sure played, not. yeah. But you know, Franz is doing this, playing at the point and playing at the two. He's not even playing where he where you would want him to be, and he's. It, it's quite frustrating that people don't seem to be able to give him this. But I, I look at him and I just think he's surely, if he keeps this up, going to end up at some point in his career, even if it's just once an all star. Oh well. He will be. He's got to. He's got to. And but wait, I, it, and you were just saying about going under the radar. It's not just him. It, like oh, Wendell goes under the radar. Paolo. Oh, usually. I don't. Know, did you see this the other day? NBA.com or the NBA account tweeted. I can't remember what day it was. It was early in the week. Paolo is third on the on the rankings of, of rookie of the year, but he only he's only missed three games. But his scoring and everything he's doing is still better than Benedict Matherin. And I can't remember who was second. Was it uh, Keegan Murray? I can't remember who the third was. Oh, the second player yeah, was. Ivy. Or Ivy, sorry. Uh, Ivy, Jordan, yeah. Jane Ivy. But you're like, Paolo's quite clearly the best player out of this entire group already. And you've got he's a third. beast. Well, anyway, I'm not ranting. He's an absolute that. beast. No, mate. We'll, we'll, we'll come on to Paolo in a minute. But, <laughs> Gary, just coming back to Franz. He's been playing point guard for us quite a bit. How well do you feel his game fits to that that role to playing point guard? He can do it, but it isn't his position. Yeah, and uh, you know he's done really well. Like you, you look at when he's the guy right now on the team, and he's he's facilitating, he's rebounding, he's trying to take on the score. And but what I really want to see is this team getting on the floor and seeing where you can actually get that front court to gel. Because of what happened with Euro Basket, and then we, what you've got with injuries, we haven't really seen that. You know, Wendell, Franz, and um, Paolo get the time together that you would you would have hoped by this point. And really, the, the beneficiary of it, I know it's jumping ahead a little bit, it's been ball ball. But yeah, our, our front court rotation looks really good, but we just can't, we can't get them on the floor together. And yeah, I'm ha- I'll take Franz playing some point, but. I shouldn't really be watching that. It's, it's not his. Right. I mean, for me, he isn't a point guard. Mm. He's doing a strong job filling in in that role. Um, and you look at some of the struggles that we've had, and I know we're going to come on to that sort of thing in a bit, but some of the turnovers that we've had are mm. entirely related to the injury issues. And I think once you get, once you see that change, you see that's that stat column massively improve but Coming back to France, what a job the man's doing. Um, he has to be in consideration for most improved in some ways. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's the strongest candidate, but he has to be in some ways for that, in that category, because he has played so well. I, I think the, the strongest candidate for most improved, actually, is on the magic. I do. Wendell. I, I think I would put Ball Ball. Yeah. The only reason Bol Bol won't be in that category, yeah, though, was just because he hadn't played for the last yeah, three years. Yeah. He hasn't played, but just when you look at what he was and buried on the bench at Denver. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. he's a guy who's, you know, was putting up, what, two points a game or something? You look at that as a leap, where he's came oh, he's huge. and he's, he's saved yeah. his career. This, that, yeah. if, this, if there'd be another injury, Bol Bol's off to China or he's been assigned to the G League. Yeah. You know, so such a revelation, absolute yeah. revelation. But uh, Mikey, we'll have a, have a quick conversation about RJ's minutes because uh, with Markel and Cole both being out, there's been lots of debate as to why RJ isn't playing. I mean, it, Jamal Moses has even been asked about it. So, RJ or Kevin Harris, and should RJ be getting more minutes? Yeah. Moving on. Thank you. We'll move on again. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, RJ should definitely get a minute. I mean, it's it's very clear to see every time RJ's getting minutes and he's getting an opportunity to play, 
he has an impact and I can't remember. Now, I've been frustrated this week because I've not been able to watch the last two games properly. I've only been watching mm. the All Possessions recap, but we'll get on to League Pass rants later on. Um, but I can't remember what game it was, but there was, was it the Charlotte game? And Mosley pulled the starters early in the third quarter yeah. and then brought yeah, on the bench unit. And RJ made things tick. He made things happen. Um, he's He's a really good defender. He gets downhill really well. He's doing a much better job of playing with speed, um, shooting the three. Like he's not. Look, when we're fully healthy, you don't. We don't really want our chain here the rotation when we're fully healthy necessarily. But whilst we're short-handed, it's it feels like a no-brainer that RJ should be in that rotation. Not necessarily starting, but he should definitely be getting an opportunity to play. And it does make you think that there is something else going on that we don't know about, that we're not going to know about. Um, and we had our own stories that we can't share, but we heard in the off-season about certain things going on um, with RJ. Um, and I, I don't know. I, I, it does feel like there might be a trade come in or a trade request come in or, or, or something there. Um, I mean, does it feel like they're possibly trying to look after him, keeping him healthy for a move? Because that's the only sort of feasible reason that I can think of. And then, does and it then you... does it make any sense to have no. not picked up his option? Not not when you're on a rookie deal. Not when you're on a rookie deal. Yeah. Um, I I just don't get it. Um. Maybe the front office don't think he meshes with the rest of the roster properly. I, I don't know, but surely that lowers his trade value by not picking up his option yeah. as well. And it, the other question for me is if he doesn't play and you are looking at moving him, he doesn't get exposure. Does it make sense to have somebody who is arguably, whilst we're over there, the best of the three guards that we had playing? Mm. Yeah. Um, not to give him the opportunity it doesn't seem to make a deal of sense to be holding him out there's something going on and then you mentioned Paul about Jamal Mosley's press conference and Kobe Price was mm. was really pushing Jamal Mosley yeah, who, whose answers didn't really cut it for, for me or, or a lot of other people really um, who basically said it was about was it about Get, that he wants a starter, on, starter on the floor all yeah. the time. Well, that just doesn't make any sense, does it, at all? Um, I, I don't get it. Um, I, I think Mosley's frustrated. I don't know if it's necessarily his decision. It feels a bit like that as well. I, I, I don't know. Um, but again, at the end of the day, we're all bloody frustrated. We've only won four games. We've got all these. We got seven players out. Well, we got two of them coming back tonight. In yep. Wendell and Gary Harris finally, um, but it's just been such a frustrating start to the season. We've obviously had a, a good couple of wins along the way, but we just want to see these players play and, and see that competition with everybody pushing each other to get better. Um, and it just feels like RJ's being held back for some reason at the moment. Well, we've experienced the the atmosphere in the Amway this season. Uh, you know, you mentioned the good wins. It was a, it was an incredible atmosphere against Golden State. That was getting close to the playoff levels, the volume and the the, the engagement of the crowd. Um, opening night against Boston, considering there were so many Boston fans in, it was because it became a tight game where we were coming back and we had a huge opportunity. Unfortunately, Cole missed his uh, tomahawk dunk um, and that just took the air out of the building but the atmosphere has been there so it's understandable why fans are getting frustrated um, because there is an excitement and there are, um, people are paying money to come and watch the team again that frustration is coming through quite loud and clear on Facebook and Twitter and you know I love a good scroll through Magic Facebook so and we've got to get, we've got to talk about Paolo in some way. So this is the way, we, this is the way we're going to do it. One of the takes I saw online this week was that Paolo, with Paolo out of the team, the Magic are a better team. 
we play better. Genuine, genuinely, this post. I will say that that post was put up before we played both Charlotte and Minnesota, which sort of deflated the argument anyway. Um, so it was based off of the two wins against uh, Dallas and Phoenix. Now, none of us are experts. We're all just fans voicing our opinion uh, on what we watch. And we're just talking about the team that we love. The question that I'm asking both of you, is there any merit to the position that we are better as a better team without Paolo Banquero? And in anticipation of said derision of that take, which is which was basically saying that it allowed Franz playing with greater freedom as he wasn't restricted by Paolo's presence. Why is Paolo such a valuable asset to us? Gary, you go first, mate. Well, clearly, if we, we go with that school of thought, then we should just um, put Paolo on the end of the bench, really, shouldn't we? <laughs> you know, like, street clothes. You know, get, get the street clothes on. I, I saw it in the chat earlier where we were going to get the, the Czech uniforms, the played one. <laughs> <laughs> Don't play the guy. You know, like, obviously, why would you want to have a guy who can score 24 points a game and like get close to nine rebounds and play like LeBron James on the floor? Like, I wouldn't. Like, I wouldn't want that type of guy on my team, you know? But, um, <laughs> you know, like... I don't get it. I don't get it for the simple reason that it's the same reason why I don't get these like people like jumping in on Jalen Suggs and jumping in on Cole Anthony is that people need time in the league to play games. And I, I can't even believe I'm discussing this really, but... Uh, <laughs> I just thought it was such a great... Well, we're a better team without him. I'm trying to do and, this. And, this, and I've got to say, this lad argued with people. I, he kidding. really went for it. I'll tell you why. He was probably a salty Rockets fan because he still got oh. it. They didn't get him in the draft. That's why. In all honesty, does, did anyone really expect Franz Wagner and Paolo Bancaro and Wendell Carter to just take to the floor in game one and look as though they've been playing together for five years? Because I might be an outlier here, but I, I didn't. I was kind of... <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking we might see some pretty good basketball, but he does things that they do. And they've got to figure each other out. We we had this conversation in the, in the when we were looking at the draft picks. You know, there's there's, there's an overlap with Paolo and Wendell. There's an overlap with Paolo and Franz. That's why some people were on for Jabari Smith. That's why some people were on for Chet Holmgren. But at the end of the day, he's the he's clearly the best rookie in the league. And he, we're talking if you look at the stats that he could be on the All Star team if he gets back and starts yeah. playing. Yeah. yeah, bench him for me. That that's what I would do. But. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, what Paolo brings is media eyes. He brings a star, and he brings a guy who you can put the ball in the hands and say, "Go and get buckets." And we have not had that in re reality for a long, long time in Orlando. He's a franchise player, and him and Franz Wagner will figure it out, no doubt. Yeah. Mikey, what, what's Paolo bringing to this this team for you? I mean, he's a beast. He is an absolute beast when you see him in person. I mean, he's massive. I mean, if, I mean, if we went by Facebook, Facebook uh, magic fans, or or a, a small minority of them, should we say, we'd be benching Paolo and starting RJ, wouldn't we? And, and featuring him as the him and Kevon Harris as the as the as the go to players. Um, there's not really a lot to say, Paul. It's just a stupid comment, to be honest. That's just the way it is. Um, I mean. Even Zach Lowe posted, I think it was earlier today, that when Franz and, and Paolo are playing together, the numbers suggest we've got a top ten offense, and I think mm. we're, I think in, I think overall this season we're fourth in free throw rate. How many times in the last five to ten years have we always sat here and said the Magic can't shoot threes and they can't get to the free throw line, but here we are, we're shooting the fourth most free throws in the league this year. With a rookie doing that, and, well, that was, and, and that's even, where I was going to say even, what he's bringing to the team. Yeah, and, and even when Paolo out the team being injured at the moment, even Franz is getting to the free throw line as yeah. well, and so is Wendell. Um, so I mean that 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 front court, those three are are the next five to ten years for me. Um, so yeah, that, there's nothing I mean, else just, to say, Paul. 
There's nothing else like, there's to just, say, mate. There's just such an... For me, it's, it's more about what you want, what you were seeing with Paolo. Um, it was just a nice way of what, introducing what, it. What am I seeing with it? Uh, I mean, we got to see him in person for four games. Yeah. And I sat there at times. And I, I, was it the... Was it the Hornets game? And he he was he, they ISO'd him in the corner and he did this move and basically finished with this little step back fadeaway jumper. And I sat there, I was like, man, I, I just I, I was just gobsmacked watching him. There's him him and him and Bol Bol, both of them, in every game I watched them when we were on holiday, three, four, five times a game. Each did something that you're just like, that's unbelievable. We've not had players that could do that. Probably like we haven't had a player like Paolo that could score like that since T Mac. Like uh, uh, and Bowl is just doing incredible things as well, and we'll, we'll get into that later on. But yeah, pa- Paolo just does things, and he just makes it look so effortless. He doesn't look like a rookie at all. He looks like a player that's played in the league for five years. He looks like somebody who. He's very sure of himself. I, 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 I just can't believe that we're sat here what fourteen games into the season, I, and I was on the Jabari Smith train. Gary was all over Chet Holmgren. None of us really talked about Paolo. That was Jabari. None of us really talked about Paolo, and here we are. Like every every week, every game, we just sit here and we're like, man, we've got we've got the guy. We've got we got two or three guys already for me. There's um, an incredible we've, we've excitement just be patient. when. Paolo's got the ball. You're just waiting for something to happen. Yeah, it felt. He, he's it just felt got, like he's you were watching. That, waiting. He's got that. He's got that ability that you've seen LeBron have for the last 15, 20 years, where he can just get downhill and players just bounce off him. He can finish. He gets to the line and ones. He can score from all three levels. And look, he's not shooting the three brilliantly, but that'll come. I mean, the guy. You yep. can tell the guy works hard. Um, but he doesn't need the three. <laughs> he's averaging 24, and I think he's shooting like 25% from the three-point line. So I'm, imagine... I'm happy for just watching him drive into that paint. Oh, I love get it. Get the fouls, get us to yeah. the free throws. Yeah, I, he's, he's, just, he's just that player we've been waiting for. And there is such an excitement to see him um, in a Magic shirt. And I can't wait for him to be back in the team, likely... Philly, I'm I'm reading because he's not travelled. Okay, well, Paul, you know as well though. Like adding on that, I know it's I know it was a Facebook point. I'm just sitting there thinking though, the previous draft we saw Cade Cunningham and Jalen Green get hyped like nothing we've seen for a while. Yep, I think Paolo Bancaro looks better than they did. <laughs> this yeah. stage, so we might have got the best player out of the last two drafts. We might have the best right. two drafts. You look at um, after, after the Golden State game, Draymond's comments about Paolo. There's been so, and other coaches have been talking about him. Other players are talking about him. There is nobody who has who the Magic have played who have come against him who have got anything other to say, to say than this guy is the real deal. Yep. Dray- Draymond was saying that in summer league, he was. Yep, and we were all saying, yep. like, "Yeah, that's that's nice to hear, but let's see it happen." And then, like, he's just he just he just carried it on. So, Mikey, what's going to be your in, in these games? What's been your biggest uh, concern or your positives? Which main positives? Positives. Fourteen games in, uh, I think we can already tell who we're moving forwards with. Over the next couple yep. of years, I think that's already clear. Now we just want to see them get reps and minutes together. Um, concerns, injuries, obviously, but I, I don't know whether it's just the. I, I don't know whether that's just us being too caution, too, too cautious around the injuries. Um, some of it's just. It's just it's just the way it is. Like Paolo twisting his ankle, it happens. Um, Wendell plantar fasciitis, it happens. Like you can't really do a lot about that. Um, I think turnovers, like you've put it in the notes, Paul. Um, turnovers have obviously <laughs> been an issue. Now there have been games where they've really cleaned it up and it's looked really good. Yeah. So they can they can do it, um, and I think obviously it's going to help when we get Markel back, 
who's going to settle things down and put players in their right positions and not asking players to do more than they really need to do. Um, hence, like Franz having to play the one at times. Like that, that's not his game. That's <laughs> let, let's put him back where he belongs. Um, yeah, I, I I wouldn't say I'm not. I don't think the focus, the end. I'm not sure the focus, and the energy is a, a concern. Like we, because other than what the the Charlotte game where we got blown out. Sorry, the the Timberwolves game where we got blown out. Nearly every game we've been in this year, even when we've got down in double digits mm -hmm. or or big big deficits, we've we fought our way back into games. Like I was there for for games like like the Rockets game, for example. We got down in that game. It looked like it was over. We clawed ourselves back. We gave ourselves a chance and then we just didn't quite have enough down the stretch. There's been a lot of games like that this year. So I'm not fussed about that necessarily. I think I think turnovers is the biggest concern for me. Um, and again, I think that's just players maybe trying to do a little bit too much. Um, Jalen Suggs being one of them. Um, I think maybe when Markel comes back, you might want, Suggs playing off the ball a little bit more than he has been, not necessarily being that initiator. But look, I, I don't care. For me, the, there's there's five players. The, the positives is Wendell, Paolo Franz, Bol Bol. <laughs> Those are the definites who you're moving forward with over the next few years. And then there's a, there's probably two, three, four other players there that are on the fringes as well. But that's... It's coming. We're going to be good. You, you, you've got, be, you've got that positive. You've got that feeling, haven't you, mate? You've got that feeling. Yeah, just be. Yeah. We just got to be patient, and it and it's hard to be when we've not gotten off to the start we hoped. Gary, positives. What for you? It's hard to disagree with what Maggie said, but I think um, I would take it back to you know, like this this rebuild seem feels like it's been going on forever, even though it's a new rebuild. Yeah. So, Week, but it's been a, a long time since you've had a real decision to make about if you were buying a Magic jersey, which player you would get on it. That's probably the best way to put it. And <laughs> that's, that's brilliant, mate. I love the analogy. Yeah, that there hasn't there hasn't been there. There hasn't been like the player to hang your hat on and go, "Oh, that's Orlando's guy." And we've had players who we hoped, like really, we we like we big baby. Up. Well, you know, what, what can you say, Mikey, you know? <laughs> but, you know, like with Jonathan Isaac, we we hoped and hoped that he was the guy against the backdrop of injuries. And then, you know, Mark Kell, we hoped, and he might still find his form and get his shot back and be the guy. But it was always hope. And now when you look at it, you're going, well, actually, the guy's there. We just drafted him. But then there's another guy from Germany there who's very, very good. We just drafted him recently. And then you look at it and you go, you know, we've got Wendell on this contract that's a steal. Credit to Mikey here, but you know, ball, ball with what, you know, you called it in the uh, the summer about it. But ball, balls came in and all of a sudden you look and then you're going, yeah, you can see whether that guy was seen as a guaranteed top eight pick before injuries. This, this, <laughs> this is what you're seeing, you know, like he looks like he could be with the minutes and 18 points a game player. So I think the positives is, is those guys are there. I know he's had some bad games this season, but I think Jalen Suggs has taken a leap. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I, I'm encouraged by that, especially when you consider that the injury problems he's battled and the time he's missed away from the court where he hasn't been able to practice. So I think that Jalen Suggs' upside is definitely there. Um, my concern is... Obviously, we've all just been in Orlando, and we've been at the Amway. We've we've sampled the atmosphere. It was there in the Boston game. It was there in the Charlotte game. You guys were there like longer than I was and such. But people are paying for these tickets week in, week out to go and watch, and we're still losing. <laughs> and as much as we can be excited, and we are, that does take its toll. And you don't want to lose people and see people drift again because they're like, oh, it's another season where we're not going to compete. So my, my concern is is that just really we haven't got the personnel out there to start the season that you would expect. And I, I get injuries happen, but, you know, last time we were in the playoffs, we were still not healthy. And we've gone through yeah. 
rebuild and you know a couple of big drafts since then so my concern really is about the the impact on the energy of the fan base and this why we seemingly can't get players fit yeah i think that's a fair point i, I was going to go with jalen as my positive i mean, you can easily you can make an argument for wendell the guy has he's just so strong as a center he is this point, there were a couple of games where we saw him get probably a bit bullied, but uh, overall, so solid. Ball, wow. He just does some freakishly brilliant things at times. Um, but Jalen, I, I look at the, the game that he had against Golden State when he came back on um, against, I know we lost this game, but the, when he came back on um, against Charlotte, uh, sorry, yeah, Charlotte was the last game, wasn't it? No, uh, Minnesota, when he came back on, mm-hmm. having been injured against Minnesota. Um, we were struggling at the point when he came back on and he dragged us back into it. I know we, did, we ended up losing by quite a few points, but he came on and gave us a focus. I don't think Jalen is a point guard. I would rather see him play at the two. Um, I think playing him at the side of... Mark Kelly is going to be really interesting because uh, G made the point to me earlier today. Jalen does see good passes. He does see a good pass. But rather than him being the primary ball handler, being that other option where he can continue with his drives into the paint, he is shooting better. Um, I think he's just improved hugely and I'm excited to see where he can go. Um, We said it earlier, don't get everybody jumping on him. Give him a chance. Uh, and I think he's done well. Um, but the thing I'm happy to see has come to an end is that zonal defence because that was not working for us. That really wasn't. I'm pleased that we've, we've seemed to have gone away from that again in a minute. But coming back to what Gary was saying, it leads us into where we're we going. And I'm going to go there. The question is, and it's been asked by many Magic fans online, are we tanking? So our record is 4-11. and 11. Uh, only Charlotte, Detroit, Houston and the Lakers are worse in terms of winning percentages. I'm not saying that we're that they are that there are other teams that are much better than us but on their winning percentages. I think that we've been unlucky in one or two games. So it sees us 13th in the East and 26th across the league. Um, early opinions, way too early opinions. Mikey, are we tanking? Because you asked me this question in the week. <laughs> I'm going to say no. I think injuries are clearly a big part of why we are losing games and it might be slightly orchestrated that they're not coming back when they possibly may be ready to. And we're maybe, like, like for example, Markel and J.I. have spent a long time out injured and... They're just, especially those two, they, they've had their injury problems in the past. And I know Mark Fox is just getting over a broken toe, but there's, in a way, there's no need to rush them back because there are so many games left as well, is the other way to look at it. Um, obviously, we don't want to wait too long where the season's gone and there's nothing to play for because that's that's where we don't want to be. We want... We want these young players to come back and, and have meaningful games and meaningful minutes. But I, I don't think we are. But all I, all I can picture in my head when I say no is, and I can't remember, I want to say it's Vagberg on Twitter, right around the big Wemby Armour, Scoot Henderson game before the season. I think it was him or somebody else posted, I'm a sicko of just the tip off of that game of, of uh, Wemby Armour going up for the tip and he zoomed in and you can see Jeff Weltman, John Hammond, I think it's Pete D'Alessandro and and some of the other front office guys sat there in like the third row watching that game, scouting that game and there's part of me thinking they want one of those two players to add to this roster as well and I think as fans we feel like we've seen enough where we don't feel they need to Um we, we don't need to be in that situation. It'd be nice, but without going through all the losses. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think we've just, 
let, let's leave the tank word for the rest of the, <laughs> up until February. Because at the end of the day, right, even if we don't do very well between now and February, we get some players back and the losses still happen or, or we improve a little bit, you can tank late on in the season and still have a good and still have good lottery odds. I don't think that's going to make a big, big difference. And there's teams there at the bottom of the league, that like Utah, San Antonio have racked up a few more wins than people probably thought they would have. So those teams that they thought were going to tank for Wembyama isn't necessarily happening at the moment. So hey, throw the paces in there. Throw your paces there, doing really well. Yep. Yep. Yeah. We'll see. Gary, are we? Not yet, we're not. That's how I see it. I, I, I think it's kind of what Mikey said. I, I, I don't think we're necessarily rushing people back with urgency. And I think the view is, is if we lose games and remain competitive and people get minutes and someone isn't 100% fit, et cetera, then on we go, so to speak. Um, I don't think, from what we've seen now, I, I don't think the playoffs is realistic this season because of the turnaround. A team's going to have... The team would have to turn around, you know, like to get to 500. We're going to straight away have to find 10 wins, probably, on top of everything else, like 10 wins more just to break 500. So I think if the injuries continue and we're still seeing players being held out and ruled out and being out longer than you would think, I think if that's happening in January, I could see that occurring. But it just goes back to my earlier point of, whereas I think some people will celebrate that because they'll play the lottery and they'll go bring Wembenyama, bring Scoot Henderson, put it on this team, and all of a sudden you're in scary territory. I think other people are forgetting that people are paying money to go and watch these games. And we go back to you putting the whole future another year on a ping pong ball. And yeah. if, if it was me and I was, if I was, say, Franz Wagner and I was sat there and I was playing really, really, really well and then seeing guys held out, but I'm getting the game time where I'm carrying everything on one hand, everything, and okay, I'm the guy. But on the other hand, I'd be thinking, well, that's two years. That's two years down for what's happening next. I mean, I, I'll be honest, I'm not, I'm not in the camp of we are tanking. Mm. Um, I think uh, I've put that many of the defeats have been by a fine margin, just one or two possessions. You, know, you go back to the Sacramento game, you go back to Cole against Boston with the, with the dunk. Those, those things changed. Yeah, by one possession, those those results were changed by one possession potentially. So, if the record had been two wins better, I don't think we would be having this conversation. We're only having it because it's been mm. such a, sh- a subject for Magic fans online these last few days. Anyway, um, I, you know, my opinion, I find it a horrible thought that we're already potentially decided to get the best odds that we can. Um, you know I don't like tanking. You know I don't like a system that rewards failure. Um, I will never like how our, how the draft works, that it rewards failure. Um, and that's why you get this situation every year with teams. So I, I, I still don't like that. And I want to watch t- all teams trying to play to win. So, I, again, I just dislike the system. I'm not convinced that we are. Um, I do think the players are. And I do think the coaches, I do think we are. It's the management decisions that are making people get frustrated. Um, it's, it's that that's making people think that we're in that mindset. Are we holding players out? Um, yeah, I think we are. I think we're all agreed that we're holding players out. It's to what purpose that we can't determine. Um, you can argue that it's for... Um, management of recurrent injuries and not wanting to see somebody get worse injury again. Um, we've seen both Franz and Jalen playing through injury. So if we were holding people out intentionally, would we have seen Jalen come back on the court the other night? Would we have seen, we, we know from uh, whilst we're over there, Franz had been um, having a hell of a lot of work done consistently on his neck for an injury. Um, and that was 
affecting him. We'd have held him out. Um, I'm also discounting Paolo. That injury happened directly in front of me. It looked horrible. You could see the pain he was in. I was surprised when he carried on. And he's he's been interviewed and is saying it's still sore. So we're not holding him out either. Um, I mean, I'm discounting J.I. as well. We've all seen the interview with Kobe Bryce that he did. Um, but we did expect to see some guys back sooner. Uh, I think that one of the problems that we have, one of the problems that we have is that we look at we see somebody's injuries listed and we, we go online and see how long it's suggested it takes. But we don't see the medical reports. We don't see the x-rays and all this sort of thing. So we, we're just speculating. None of us are doctors or whatever. So I just think I, I can see the argument. I can see where people think we are, but I don't think we are as yet. I think there's also been a couple of mistakes along the way. And I'm thinking yeah. back to last year when John Hammond said before the before the season that they were expecting J.I. to be ready for the start of last year. And obviously that's gone on for a whole nother year and we still haven't seen him back on the floor and we're seeing all these clips of him practicing and shooting around in the in the practice facility. Um, we've obviously heard a lot of rumblings about Markel clearly telling people that he's he feels he's ready to play. And look, and maybe yep. and maybe the team are protecting Markel from himself. Maybe his injury isn't fully healed and he feels he can, he, he can be ready to play. Same as Jalen the other night. And he, and he said about after the game about, he wants to show his teammates that he's willing to play through the pain and, and battle out there. And and I think they're all, they've a lot of these players have got that mindset. And I think Markel just wants to go out there and help his team. I think that's yep. playing a part of it. Um, if you look at the rest of the injuries, I mean, Cole's got an abdominal tear or, or sorry, was it a bleak tear? I can't remember exactly, but that, that's going to take a bit of time to, to repair itself. Look, Gary Harris torn his meniscus. He's going to be back this evening. So look, the players are coming back. Wendell's coming back tonight. Now he's had a couple of games of rest. Um, genuine injury. It's a genuine injury. They're, they're all genuine injuries. It's just... Yep. Markel, we saw what we what he gave us at the end of last season. I think oh, yeah. that's also playing on everyone's minds. You, we're just we're just <laughs> salivating at the thought of seeing him on the floor with Paolo, Franz, and Wendell, um, and and just seeing what a what a real rotation looks like with this young team. And I, I do. I, I just think we've got to be. It's hard as fans because, again, we're all paying good money. We're paid good money for League Pass. We've all spent really good money to go out there and watch them. We, you get season ticket holders. You get people that go to the games regularly, like you guys have already said. Um, but I, I, it's not like they're just making up injuries or they're injuring themselves on purpose or anything like that. It's just, I don't know. It is what it is, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's why I said to you, the way too early opinions on it. I just don't think we are. I don't think we are. We all, we, we all know that there isn't a team in this league who wouldn't want to secure one of those two picks. Oh, of course. The projected one or two yeah. picks. That's why the NBA have put out a warning to teams, a clear message, not a warning, a clear message about not accepting teams resting players. They've put out a clear yeah. message that they don't want that tanking will not be tolerated in this well, year. That, How are you going to work? Imp- I'm going to say how you're going to impose that is a completely different matter, but I, I'm I think I say had two had had we been two results better, I don't even consider that we would have been talking about this at all, and it's way too early in my opinion. But we still have to go there. So today, 18th of November, uh, the next pod's going to be on November the 24th. Uh, between then, we play between now and then, we play three road games. Facing the six and nine Chicago Bulls tonight, uh, and then a double header against the seven and six Indiana Pacers. So, what do you want to see from these next three games, Gary? Uh, fit players on the floor. <laughs> there you well, have. Perfectly reasonable question. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've just for the thing as well. I, I know uh, Wendell's had plantar. I've had that injury, and 
I can totally understand why you wouldn't yeah, be able to say it. it is not a pleasant injury at all. It hurts a lot. And that'll probably, like, Mike, you know more than me about this type of thing, but that'll flare up during the season. Oh, yeah. Watched. That's going to take a lot of, I would say, physio work, work on his calves, things like that, mass- massage, putting those facilities, <laughs> which we now have to use because he's going to have to watch that. It is not a nice feeling at all. So I would like to see a healthy Wendell Carter Jr. And I just want to see Gary Harris get some minutes and get just glimpses, just glimpses of what he can bring in five games time. So the corner three, perimeter defence, that type of thing. What Gary Harris does really well, that's what I want to see. I would like to see a couple of wins. Um, But at the same point in time, people coming back from injuries, it doesn't happen overnight. So more than anything, I just want people to be on the floor, healthy, and stay healthy. So. Do you guys think Gary Harris is going to start? Should he start? Mm. I, I, yeah, I, I, if I think it would be a foolhardy to to start him because he's been out for such a time. I would rather see him come off the bench uh, for the first game, get a few minutes and see how he goes, and then we can we can look at changing things around. Come the second, the first game at the Pacers, I would I wouldn't start him in I wouldn't start him tonight, but I would look at potentially on how he's gone uh, against the Pacers. Yeah. Well, you wanted to see Mikey. Aside from three healthy wins, obviously, players, that's it. <laughs> yep. Wins and so, to be honest, the other thing I'd like to see is a full game. I've got up at five AM, like I well, always wait, I'm gonna, do. This, you, like you, I, you've, been, you've been having probably the worst issues with uh, league pass out of the three of us, Gary. I know you've had virtually no access, have you? No, it's been it's been pretty bad. Um, the first game where it actually was all looking normal was the Minnesota game, and then um, the weather knocked my uh, all my internet off, so. I, I, got, I got I got thirty wow. seconds, got thirty seconds into the game, and I was like, "I'll watch the first quarter, and then I'll I'll go to bed." I got thirty seconds in, and it just shut down, and that was it. And I was like, "I, I just I just kind of just shut the laptop, and we did all like was like, I'm gonna just take that as a sign." And I think it was really. So I know you I know you've been in contact with uh, Lee Pass, Gary, Mike. Have you? Uh, yeah, been I've sent emailing? a couple of emails as well. Yeah. It's if just, anybody else is having issues, please, please contact just, just, the NBA League Pass uh, yeah. in, in some shape or form because they have to know the problems that they are causing. We are paying good money for it. I know it's not mm. as expensive as previous years, but we are paying for a product and people are not getting pro- the product. I can't watch it through, through Apple TV. The app's still not working right. on the Apple TV. I am able to watch it uh, by airdropping off of the iPad onto the TV. But it's, it's, not, it's ideal, not what I was it? paying for. No, it's no. not what I was paying for. No. Even if it is a reduced price compared to what we have been paying over the last few years. Um, I mean, just an FYI for everybody listening, like we've we've just re... What's the word? So we had an affiliate affiliation with NBA League Pass UK and we had our own promo code and all that. Uh, sorry, we had our own affiliate codes and links and all that sort of stuff. But... Uh, they changed platforms. We've re we've renewed it, but I'm not I'm not promoting them at the moment because no. the products the product's not good enough. Um, so yeah, uh, and you guys know I've always been an early bird. I get up early to watch the games before I go to work. I've been getting up at five a.m. Come downstairs to flick it on the telly, and uh, the only options have been an all possessions feed, uh, a ten minute condensed game. And then I think th- there was like a home condensed feed and an away condensed feed. And I'm like, well, that's no good, is it? So I've been watching the all possessions, which actually the last two games have been pretty dire. <laughs> so uh, it saved me an hour of my life for both games anyway, not being able to watch the full things, but that's not the point. But um, the, I've, I've been, I've been quite sad. I've got to say, because I've been, um, not to lose end, but I've had more, to, I've had time to, sit down you you tend to get two options if you look at the streaming options 
-hmm. there's two magic options and um, neither it's not clear which either is but one is the edited full game yeah. the other one which is where i've been is the full game including everything that's happening in the amway so as if you were watching it live you still get all the timeouts you get the half time entertainment tonight. and i've been a really sad boy and i've been sat watching that you're sitting there and, i wish i would start back there <laughs> i've been <laughs> watching that so i've been i've, I've been uh committing sort of almost three hours of my day to watching those games what you should have done why for... why the hell i don't know <laughs> the authentic experience what you should have done was in your kitchen cooked up some mac and cheese pulled pork and all that <laughs> and pretended you had the ultimate there uh, the ultimate fan seats again <laughs> what, what i actually also hope to have done is had some obnoxious Golden State fans sat in front of me who were shouting that they were <laughs> how dare how dare the officials not give Golden State the the calls that they deserved. Dear, oh dear. Uh, we we waved a bye bye, didn't we, Mikey? As she walked out of the arena. Oh, oh yeah, we certainly did. <laughs> <laughs> we certainly did. That was that was one hell of a game. <laughs> that was one hell of a game. But I yeah, it, 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 it would just be it would just be nice to watch three full games this week to be honest that's what I'd be happy to do um, it is what it is it feels, it feels weird because it's only like this week I feel like we're getting back into our normal fandom because the last month's yeah. just been like you guys know when you're over there but like, I could watch I watched the Cavs away game the night we landed but then I think there was two other away games within the two weeks I was there for but League Pass wouldn't let me watch it because I was in the local the local area. So there was a couple of games I, I missed out on. And I think you guys went to watch, or you did, Paul, the OKC game, the road game. Uh, I saw some, saw some of the OKC game. And, and watched I know, some of the Cavs game yeah. and watched the Pistons game. And I know Gary Clark was messaging me with the Thunder because he'd gone to a bar to watch it. And yeah. uh, it was almost... It was almost like they hadn't played in my eye because I couldn't watch it. So I was a bit like, oh, whatever. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> you know I, I, mean? I did. I've got to say, apart from uh, whilst we were over there, because you're doing so much, um, apart from the the four games I actually went to, um, I saw s snippets of those other three. I think the Detroit game was virtually the only one I saw the full game of. Um, I didn't really feel like I knew what was the position was in the league and no. how well things were going. So yeah, I get entirely what you're saying that this normal fandom has resumed this week. It's uh, yeah, it's not it's, it's, it's not... resumed on league past this week. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Say again, Gary. Normal service certainly resumed on league pass this week. Yeah, let's hope so. Let's hope so. But, uh, so where are we going on predictions, lads? Um, I did ask G. Uh, he has said. He would have gone for two and one if the injury situation was different. As it is, he's going one and two for us to beat the Pacers once. Gary, what are you having? I was going to say one and two and beat the Pacers once, but just just to be different to G, I'm, I'm going to go zero and three. Okay. Unfortunately. Right. Go on, Mikey. I'm going two and one. Come on. Let's get this back on track. I'm going to say we split the series with the Pacers and beat the Bulls. Because Wendell likes playing the Bulls. He likes playing his old team. He likes bullying Nikola Vucevic, our good pal. Uh, yeah, we need we need a better performance tonight. And and they're only six and nine. Look, we're only two games back of Chicago. Win tonight. Right, I know. And we're breathing down their necks. So I, why not? I'd gone, I, I was going one and two. And then I looked at the league and thought, that argument I've had with myself about the tanking thing, if we'd had two more wins, we wouldn't have been having this conversation. We're not talking about the Bulls line. We're all thinking, oh, the Bulls are doing all right. They are that They are that team. So I'm also going to go turn one. And I think we'll split the series with Indiana. And, but we will beat the Bulls tonight. Yes. Let's be positive. Let's be positive. If we do beat the Bulls tonight, we can do the whole, hey, honey. Nick Vucevic is in Chicago. We're dancing and we're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> as we as the bold lurch in the lottery. Oh dear! Hey, 
<laughs> That's what about you can't you can't pick on the innocent. If Elon Musk closes Twitter down, I will forever lose that tweet. In his life. <laughs> when I'm having a bad day or a bad week, I tend to hunt that out and just think, you know what? As much as a pudding as I've been this week, <laughs> it could have been worse. It could have been on camera. <laughs> Oh gosh! So yeah, good stuff, boys. Good stuff. I've enjoyed this. So anyway, to everybody, thank you as always for listening and watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Orlando Magic UK. Please leave us comments. We love to interact. Keep up to date by following us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All at Orlando Magic UK. Twitter, obviously, for Elon Musk allows us to keep using it. Uh, now we're all back from the trip. The website will become active again. Um, so that's also www.orlandomagicuk.com so until next time from us all go magic <laughs>